Two men journey to the bars and restaurants of Scandinavia to find amazing beers, always with the same question. Hey, what's on tap? It's time to find out. Hey, what's on tap podcast? And today, or this episode, we're doing... Did you get some of your southern roots back? Today, right back? today, son, what we're doing is we're having a little bottle share up in the holler. Well, we got uh, the gators on the barbecue. You're right? a long way from home, boy. <laughs> oh, I was kind of charmed by that. Please boy, you sure, look, you sure look pretty with that little mouth on you. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, you know, when you grew up in the south, you kind of kind of comes natural to you. <laughs> it sounds so, lovely when you do it. Well, sounds thank terrible you. when thank you, you. I, when Robin does it, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> did, did we throw you off a little bit? You threw bit? me off a little bit. I, uh, I was not expecting that. Um, <laughs> yeah, so well, we're doing... Where were we? Well, surprises will abound all, all around. <laughs> so we're doing a bottle share today, and we each brought a bottle to, uh, to share, as you would. Um, okay. And we thought we would uh, just kind of hang out and talk about the beers and uh, share some stories and have see a good how it old goes. time. Uh, have a good old time down the holler. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all come back now. You here? Um, so that'll be a good time. So starting off, we have what Martin. What did you bring to the party today? Yeah. So I brought a double IPA from New York, New, New York, York City. No, not New York City. Uh, uh, it's from uh, Middletown, New York. So the backstory here is that uh, this brewery, Equilibrium, mm-hmm. uh, they were present at the Cantillon Blaubau release 2018 nice. at Himmeriget. Okay. So while we were standing in line, uh, Himmeriget hadn't opened. We, we all just drank the beers with, that we had brought. They came out with uh, froze with uh, cooled cans in a small bike, going past the entire queue, selling these beers. <laughs> <laughs> so, obviously, we bought as much as we could to share with the queue, but I also brought a few bottles home. Okay. Yeah. Uh, because last Blowback queue, I had done the same, and that's when you interviewed oh, me. So, I gave you double IPAs then. It's that's like a, true. We had the... Um, the Trillium. Yeah. Trillium, yeah. Trillium. Trillium. Yeah. With the Sauvignon uh, yeah. Yeah. grape juice, yeah. I remember. Uh, so, uh, at the time of the Blowback uh, release... Mm-hmm. Uh, this can was two weeks old. And that was two weeks ago. So it's now four weeks old and basically undrinkable. It's yeah. too, It's so old. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. We're just going to open gonna be, it and dump it. Yeah, dump yeah, it yeah, completely. Yeah. Yeah. Just dead hops and uh, no flavor. Just yeah. uh, Might as well just go ahead and throw the can away. Don't even yeah. bother opening it at this point. So the name is Equilibrium MC Squared. Right. Um, uh, this brewery is, is quite hyped. And when they release the beers in New York, they have a queue. So mm. they were quite... They actually were super happy to just share beers and have fun. Mm-hmm. They really seem to have a good time just H- selling. How much, how much were they selling their cans for? I don't remember. Okay. Like one million Danish kroner. Oh, perfect. No, 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 no. no. So like 100 Danish kroner, which is one million Swedish, Swedish kroner. kroner. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. conversion is just a bitch right now. Yeah, de- yeah. definitely. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Crack it open. H- hyped brewery, double IPA, four weeks old. Undrinkable, right? Yep. By most standards these days. Yes. Nice. Oh, oh uh, yeah. I got some foam that, on that. That good no, 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 sound. No, 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 no. Here, put it in the little one. I think it's a better... We fucked up. You're, you're doing fine. You're doing fine. We have napkins. I'm, yeah. So we have a, a bit of a foam situation here. A foam and table crisis. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know it's, it's, uh, our table is fine. It's it survived worse. <laughs> Thank you. Wow, he really uh, got crazy with the phone here. You get the worst phone. I did. Mm-mm-mm. So drink some foam. Mmm, that's yummy foam. Wow. Holy crap, that is a lot of uh, like grapefruit and mango in there. It's really amazingly fruity. An Englishman told me that if you if you get a lot of foam in your glass, you're supposed to stand straight with your eyes on the horizon, your elbow at a, at an angle, you know, sort of Britishly, and just not tilt anything, just drink. And think of England. <laughs> and think of England. It, it God works. and country. Wow, that is amazing. That's really nice. Like you said, it, it does have a lot of like citrus fruits in it. Mm-hmm. Mm. For it's me, really nice. for me, uh, it's peach. Peach? I can see peach as well. Yeah. I can see the apricot peachiness of it all. Yeah, yeah. but it, it does have the lawnmower uh, sort of hops as well. Yeah. Yeah. Like stone it's fruits. Beautifully uh, colored, too. 
Yeah. It's not one of those like murky, hazy no, kind of ideas. It is it's just a little like hazy, hazy, but it's not yeah. not a huge murk bomb. Yeah. It's not like one of the uh, like Proviva shot. No. Hazy. Wow, that is exceptionally good. It's very tasty. But but going back to the um, to the actual sale of this, I feel like the queuing for beer has a little bit. It's gone overboard. Where yeah. the brewers are not even enjoying it anymore. Uh, having a lot of angry beer nerds queue for your beer and then someone doesn't get it and they get angry and they post a negative review online. Yeah. That, I think that has soured the experience for a lot of brewers. So here, the, the joy I saw in their eyes, just b- bicycling along the queue, selling as they went along, drinking beer while doing it, it, it felt like th- this is what he really wanted to do. Yeah. To share the beer. But, but as soon as you get popular, it becomes this, this machinery of, yeah. when is it released? We have to uh, either uh, refresh the website where it's sold or stand in line and fight other people. Yeah. That's not... Yeah, it's not what it was all meant to be, right? I mean, it's, it's supposed to be about sharing beers and having fun. Yeah. yeah. Trying good stuff. Well, do you think that the... I kind of feel like maybe here in Sweden there's getting a bit of a beer fatigue. Like, because I'm, I'm not seeing things flying off the shelf the way they used to. Yeah. Like, stuff selling out instantly anymore. I think, I mean... The internet, internet, internet sales more more. have, incli- have uh, increased, from what I understand. But the store stuff is not... The turnover isn't as great because you can still, no. like, go into uh, to Hansa and find... Stuff that came out weeks or, or yep. months ago, even and things that I thought it sold out initially, or I mean, some, can still pop up on the shelves. I was there today, and I mean, they still had the um, what was the Russian Imperial Stout that came out? There was two versions: one rye whiskey and one high west. Oh, Rasputin. Rasputin. Yeah. Oh, wow. so they, they still had bottles of that. Yeah, and that's it was Christmas. Yeah, yeah, that was Christmas, and it wasn't that many bottles that came out. No, sustainable wide. So, I mean, and I, I saw they still had some of the uh, what was it the. Um, Brickery at San Pigia? The brewery. Oh, yeah. No, the brewery. The brewery. Uh, the Saison Rue? The Saison Rue. Saison yeah, Rue that's shows. been there forever now. I know. And that, again, that's been yeah. almost since Christmas. There's still the um, the Boon Vat Ghost Discovery set. Yeah. You still got a couple of those on the shelf. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing that, yeah. that you're still seeing these things on the around. Yeah. Where they used to just immediately sell out. Exactly. Yeah, but there are, there are only so many beer nerds in this town, and uh, a lot of good beer. And the yeah. beer is increasing, and I mean, uh, the re- regular Joe isn't isn't about to pay uh, like 130 kroner for a good stout. No. Sorry. I think they also, I mean, I think yes and no, because I mean, before, I guess it's like maybe two and a half or three years ago at this point, but... You would have people queuing outside of um, outside of um, the Hansa Sustainable Area when there was a new beer release. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we just don't get that anymore. But, but those beers were not available on the Sustainable Area webpage. They've really oh. upped their ante. They've, made, they've really made it better by making everything available online. That's true. And and the um, the amount of beers they have in their internet, mm-hmm. uh, uh, what do you mm-hmm. call it? Web store. Yeah, we did yeah. available there. It's surprisingly high each yeah. release now. Yeah. You can still find uh Dre Fontanin and Tilquin on the web yeah. shop, which surprises me. Yeah, like one year ago, uh on the podcast after last year's Cantillon Globa, mm-hmm. yeah. we were talking about just that, just Tilquin. Yeah. yeah. But they were they ran out the same hour. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And you had gotten a lot of bottles because you enjoy them. Yeah. So even even in one year, that has changed a lot. Yeah. I, I don't have any other explanation, but that's what 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 killed the cues. Yeah. But it was it was it was sad and funny at the same time to queue, because you you have uh, on one hand you have these hipsters with their funny mustaches and their <laughs> small hats and their vests. And then the other side of the door are the hardened alcoholics <laughs> yeah. that have been drinking uh, Obro yeah. 8% for 20 years. Which one are you again? Um, I, I, 
I was the bridge between these yeah. two <laughs> people. <laughs> The alcoholic hipster, you mean? Alcohol, yeah. Alcoholic Jesus. <laughs> Unite. Uh, no, but uh, you were bringing you were bringing the the cultures together. And... <laughs> oh man. Yeah, it, it didn't end well for Jesus, you know. No. <laughs> so you're a bit like hipster Jesus. Yeah. No. Nah. nah. Well, I, don't, I don't have the beard for it. <laughs> he doesn't have a gospel. Please trust me on that one. <laughs> so before we drink, and only a small following. Before we empty these <laughs> tasty glasses, should we open another bottle? Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, we should. Yeah, we can get one of the. What do you want to try next? Um, well, it's 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 anything really. I mean, we can do. So, for all you podcast listeners, we brought one double IPA, two imperial stouts, and one American strong ale. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> we we ran out of options. Right? Our, yeah. our our taste buds are fucked either way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah bleep that. We're gonna be screwed. Bye. It'll be fine. Let, let's th- let's do the Firestone Walker. Let's yeah. do the Firestone Walker. So, well, basically, I think it was last week that the. Um, well, well, where should we start on this? Well, Spenderps is it, it's Spenderps, right? That yeah. got the distribution rights in Sweden for Firestone. Yeah. Um, so I mean, since they got distribution, we've been seeing quite a lot of good Firestone stuff here. Yeah. Uh, I know Inferno in Lund usually has at least two or three. Firestone they usually have like the Union Suntac. Jack and they have the EC Jack. Pivo Pills. Pivo Pills, EC Jack, and Union Jack. I think. Yeah. They usually have those uh, those uh, free on tap. Um, but yeah, so we're, we're starting to see a lot of Firestone beers coming in. Yeah, it seems like once a quarter they have a special release. Yeah, and this time we were uh, graced with, um, with two beers, or well, we were supposed to be graced with two beers. Uh, we were supposed to get Velvet the Merkin. Velvet Merkin, which is one of those elusive uh, beers for Stefan. Oh, I've been trying <laughs> to try it for so long, and it is, it's always it's always out. I'm always a little, a little just miss it. it uh, last time it came out, I uh, I got one, and uh, I drank it without you. I know, like an ass. <laughs> well, I mean, you should be should be used to it by this point. True. True. <laughs> so, but yeah, so. Since the Velvet Merkin was a bit delayed this time, um, I picked up the Firestone Anniversary 2017, which uh, comes with a neat little uh, script, or what do you call these? Scree. Scree. Yeah, we'll call it. Comes with a neat little scree, um, which we're not going to read because it's massive. It's two pages and very fine print. Two pages and very fine print. It's not that fine. You got glasses, and so. I do. Yeah. It's very astute of you. I know. Well, I can see those. Um, can you see this print from over there? Uh, I can't see the italics, but I can read the final blend is uh, Velvet Merkin, uh, Parab- uh, Parabola, Sticky Monkey, uh, Bravo, and El Dorado. Yeah, you're right. And know, it, also, it also gives us the ratios with, uh, with which one is, is brought in most here. So since you haven't had Velvet Merkin yet... No. I'm happy to say that this is 42% Velvet Merkin. So it's basically Velvet Merkin. It is like so, almost yeah. half a Velvet Merkin. Yeah. Yeah. So, so. I don't need to try it now. I've basically had it at this point. Well, I mean, <clears throat> I, I, uh, it just said that Hansa had 120 Velvet Merkins in stock. So When? Today. I didn't see it there, but... <laughs> what? Or, you didn't You didn't queue? Yeah. <laughs> God damn it, man. Well, no I, wonder I you never see it on the, to try it anyway. But yeah, so... Uh, the anniversary 2017 is 11.8% uh, American Strong Ale. Yeah. So, enjoy, guys. So you can make this at home, then? Yeah, you could if you wanted. Just if, we, if we buy all these beers, yeah. then we can make it. Yeah. Yep. Oh, they're probably around here somewhere. But well, we, I mean, I've, got, I've got Sticky Monkey. I've got Parabola. I've got Hildorado. Velvet Merkin's coming out next week. We just need the Bravo, and then we can make it. But I have, I like, have Bravo. I have, like, Do you have Bravo? I have Bravo. Are and you I, kidding? I have a bucket. Oh! <laughs> We Perfect. Because Bravo came out. Bravo came out a long ago. I didn't get that. Oh, you missed it. That's right. That was the one you missed. Oh. And I ended up. I ended up getting that. And one. we so have. We, we have like two cases of Velvet Merkin. Oh, there you go. Well, Are you yeah. shitting me? <laughs> <laughs> so, God damn it! Oh, I'm sorry. That was a beer oh. podcast lie. That was a lie. That is really funny that you actually <laughs> fell for it. I didn't believe. It. I was like, really? That doesn't make sense. How would you have two cases of that? <laughs> You guys need to look at how you're spending your money because you're doing it poorly. <laughs> oh no, we're doing it just right. All right, exactly. Well. <laughs> right. Well, uh, cheers, guys. Cheers. Right, cheers. Cheers. All right. And well, thank you so much. 
I'm Thank super goodness. excited about this one. Oh, the smell is just everything that I want. Mm. It's definitely a barrel aged old ale. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's beautiful. You get the you get the stout, you get the the um, sticky monkey, like barley wine. El Dorado's barley wine as well, as blonde barley wine, right? Yeah. But I mean you get like a really nice mix so it's of an oatmeal stout, styles. a Russian Imperial oatmeal stout, uh, a central coastal quad, an Imperial Brown Ale, and a blonde barley wine. Yeah. Yeah. And at least one of them has to be like whiskey barrel aged, right? They're all bourbon barrels, yeah. except yeah. for the Helderado, which is rum barrels. Rum barrels. Oh, yes. so there's a bit of rum in this, huh? I usually don't like the rum barreled uh, beers, but uh, mm. I'm not getting that. I think what's the what's the ratio of the? It's nine percent. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's the least it's, amount, so it yeah. should be a very very subtle, almost yeah. indistinguishable from the. It's just like, you know. The t- the paper version of credits after a movie. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah you've got notes from the uh, the brewmaster Mike uh, Brynildsen, and on one side, and then you've got just a complete history of everything on the other side. The goal, the barrels, the puzzle, the blending session, the final blend, and then distinguished winemakers and friends who came together to help. First, the 2017 blend. there was nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All ye who brew beer to become rich, abandon all hope. Exactly. And on the seventh day, God created beer. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's it's quite cool that they actually give you all that information as well. With yeah. it. Yeah. it makes it into uh, more of an experience. It does. Try it. So, how would you guys rate the um, the first beer, the double IPA? Um, I gave it an uh, eight out of ten. All right. Yeah. yeah so we, so which rating system? Uh, we usually do four out of five. Or we usually do five scale. <laughs> we usually so do we four or fives. Four or fives. <laughs> we don't drink bad beer. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, we really don't. And most of our most of our reviews are in the three seven five to four point two five range. I would argue it's between like two point seven five and five. When we add the Christmas beers in, then yeah, it's a bigger range. But yeah. normally, it's not as Christmas and Easter beers. Then uh, well, we only done Easter beers once, and those were horrible. So don't ever. Don't Y'all ever do need that. to do a podcast where you drink really shit beer. Oh, we have. Oh, oh we've done yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But we haven't gone to like, we're only drinking like uh, Prips Blue or... Uh, Yikes. Oh, we should do like a uh, Battle of the American mainstream bloggers where we have... Because now we can get, we can get all three of them. Sweden versus US <gasps> poor man's Pilsner. Oh, we should. Because we can do Budweiser, Coors Light, and... Uh, can, right? Miller. And Miller. Hey, now that we're talking about beer, I actually found out why American beer, beer is so bland. Uh, it was during the Prohibition times, yeah. uh, and they were trying to convince the public that beer was good for you. And they were trying to oppose it to uh, strong liquor, like whiskey and uh, mm-hmm. gin, because they were like, this this stuff, this is bad for you, and it tastes, it has a lot of taste. But this stuff is almost like water, so it can't possibly be bad for you. <laughs> and then the, the tradition lives on. There sadly. you go. Nice. I don't know if it's true, but uh, it sounds like it could be true. No, <laughs> it's, uh, only one of us would, would go on a podcast and lie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I already lied. <laughs> it, it, it's seldom mentioned how close Sweden was to prohibition. How were they? When, when there was a, a what do you call it? A, um, a Folkomröstning. Uh, yeah. Public vote? Public vote, yeah. not for uh, the politicians, but for a, a particular issue. This was in like the 20s. So, like, so, <laughs> so yeah, no, sure. sometime in the twenties, right? Yeah. Uh, when when these waves were going through the world, uh, and America actually went mm-hmm. for prohibition. Sweden had a public vote, and fifty-one percent of the population said, "Let's keep alcohol legal." Jesus. Forty-nine percent said, "Let's for let's ban it altogether. Let's do Swedish prohibition." Wow. People seldom talk about that, and then some people like me, are negative towards Systembolaget. But that's just a, it's just a remnant of what the people, what all, what half of the people really wanted. Yeah. We have a culture, and we, we had a culture of, uh, because alcohol was very, very severely prohibited, and you mm-hmm. can only buy so much alcohol. And that, that varied depending on who you are, who yeah. you were. So uh, unmarried women over 30, could buy more alcohol than married women. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. It should be the other way around. Because <laughs> they have a reason to drink. Married, married women over 30. <laughs> yeah. 
uh, yeah. Um, but and and we 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 had this. All the citizens had to had to apply for a for a little like pamphlet sort of thing. And when you bought alcohol, like a passport, they put a stamp in it. Mm. And when it was full, they couldn't buy any more alcohol. For the month, or for how for the year, or for how uh, per month, as far as I know. Okay, there was a monthly ratio. Wow. And there was also this rule in, uh, in Swedish pubs and uh, restaurants that uh, you had to have a meal with your alcohol. And yeah. we didn't. It's still kind of. No, it did. Pubs, pubs, pubs have to serve food. Have to serve food, yeah. Yeah, but you, you brought. Uh, if you were, you, you know, if you were wealthy and you wanted to drink more than. They, they were only allowed to serve you so much alcohol. Yeah. Uh, but if you were wealthy, you paid a student, uh, and gave them a free meal, and took their alcohol from them. That's the way to do it. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, the, 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 uh, entire culture is formed around that. And yeah. I, it's, it's not that I mean, long ago. You still can't have a place that only serves alcohol. No, you no. need, to, I mean, need to serve food as well. And I understand that the food to alcohol ratio has to be a certain percentage as well. So it can't be just like a, a front to just... Like you just sell really shitty food that no one eats. People just come it's in like to the drink. Pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You actually have to have a ratio of, of food to to beverage sales to be able to qualify oh. as that. I did not know that. Yeah. Martin right. is ma- making sign a sign at me. Are you ready for the next one already? Nerd Brewing extends. This is our only non-American beer. Yeah. So this is uh, this is what I'm bringing. Yeah. And I, so, I really, this is my favorite brewery because brewers, <laughs> they are so attractive and really smart. Really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, shit. I mean, if you ever get to meet one of them, you should just buy them a beer on spot. Buy them a beer. Because, yeah. yeah. Take a photo, masturbate to it later. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And exactly. they, they are amazing people, these yeah. two, and they do so much good for the world. Not, not just in brewing, but also in bed. That's the rumor. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they, are, they are so good at that. And uh, they... They also can summon unicorns. Wow. Yeah. Where is our unicorn? Exactly. That's what I'm wondering now. Well, it has to be summoned. Uh, it has not been summoned yet. Yeah, no, I, I won't summon a unicorn for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's only for special people. So, uh, if I'm going to present this beer uh, for Karin, so she doesn't have to... Do you want to present it yourself? Uh, no, please. Please do. So, uh, Nerd Brewing... If you if you didn't understand it yet, Karin is one of the brewers. Uh, <laughs> hint, hint. Um, so Extens is an oak-aged imperial oatmeal stout. 10.8% uh, alcohol by volume. And it's super thick. And this... Uh, and this is the Vietnamese coffee edition. Yeah. So nice. uh, um, Nerd Brewing makes a lot of different... Stouts, the Elsif, the Index Out of Bounds, the Extends, they're all different recipes and then a lot of variants. And I think almost all of them has ha- have had some kind of Vietnamese coffee variant. Yeah, yeah. We, Maybe we, not... uh, we really like the Vietnamese coffee. And um, I mean, the first time we made a beer with this uh, style of coffee, uh, just a small anecdote. Uh, my partner brought two uh, soda bottles that he, with, you know, he had brewed coffee the night before. And one was Swedish coffee, and the other one was Vietnamese coffee. And did you serve both of those next to each other, right? Yes. Or did you bottle yeah. both of them? Uh, yes. Yeah, we bottled them. Yeah, all yeah. Of them. Uh, and, and when he opened the bottle with the Swedish coffee, it had gone awful overnight. It was just uh, acid, uh, awful, uh, awful. Pure uh, coffee soup. Yeah. Yeah, you know what it smells like when you've forgotten your coffee out of yeah. there. Yeah. Um, but then he opened the Vietnamese coffee one, and it was mm. it was just lovely. Still. Okay. So. Um, so this is this is sort of, yeah, think coffee, but also a lot of vanilla tones. Um, and uh, I also have to say, we worked hard for this beer. Uh, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. We created a microclimate because we boiled it so hard. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Like the, the, the ceiling started raining, right? Yep, it rained on us. It sounds about right. So, how many versions that, of well. Extends did you make? I, I'm so sorry, I can't remember. It's been a couple of stouts now. But Extends, mm. I think we made seven. Yeah, seven or eight. Seven oh, or wow. eight, yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, we had a lot of fun with this, and we uh, we sort of experimented with it. And uh, so there's a, of course, two coffee editions, licorice. Um, we made a, a, an uh, apple pie. Th- this is the this is the the tricky part because index out of bounds and extends were made so close to each other 
that the different variants yeah. kind of blend so, together. So Swedish mm -hmm. coffee was only indexed out of bounds. This is where because okay, and then yeah. they were released in such a weird order. I'm not blaming you because this is how. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, this is my own brewery, and I should know, but uh, <laughs> I, I blame this on that I, I drink a lot of alcohol. So yeah. <laughs> that's a good reason. No, no, the, the, and summon a lot of unicorns. Yeah. yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Those unicorns are kinky, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I completely don't blame you because the beers that were brewed first weren't released first. Oh. Because of how long some of the beers had to be be aged before they were in a good state to be sold. Yeah. So so trying to figure out the timeline is difficult for for anyone, I think. Yeah. yeah I think so too. And this is I have to final words on this. This is a pastry stout. There you go. Yeah, and I love pastry stouts. There's, there's mm -hmm. so much crap being thrown at pastry stouts now. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen the the website. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something like yeah. beer.pastry.info or something. Could you send me something from there? I just imagine that it was, was one. It was made up. Uh, just comes up with a name. It yeah. randomizes it. Yeah. Hazelnut cupcake chocolate chip cookie lemon goes imperial rum barrel aged stout. Yeah, that sounds like uh, instant Omnipolo's, win. Omnipolo's latest release. It was funny. It's just this thing. I'm like, I mean, that sounds like an Omnipolo thing. I don't. I, uh, I don't know that if you're joking or not because some of the releases the... are like French toast, bacon, lemon meringue IPA, and you're like, you just vomit in a glass and try to sell me it's an IPA. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm gonna say one last thing about this beer. Uh, our slogan is uh, "open source beer." So, uh, you know, I joked about it with the scroll earlier. We could make this at home, but you actually can make this at home. Yeah. So yeah, go to our web page and uh, the recipe is right there. All right. So yeah. nerdbrewing.com or dot se. Dot se. Dot se. se. All right. And uh, so, have you had people make your beers and then report back to you on how they turned out? Oh, we've never had that. Yeah, you, 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 you have. You have. Once. Did you? People do uh, hand in beers. I've never. Uh, sorry, I haven't. I've never. I, again, I drink a lot of alcohol. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> uh, okay, cool. Like uh, in uh, in Halmstad, there's a fan, uh, Gustav. Oh, what's his last name? If he's listening, I'm the worst friend ever. Oh, he's well. a friend of uh, Christian. Yeah, Gustav E. That's how we all know him. So I feel like Martin probably just like snagged those bottles before they got to you. Yeah, I probably did. That's what happened. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no, no. But they might have been drunk in the in the nerd brewing booth at some festival. Uh, that's yeah, not... okay, yeah, that's another thing because festivals are so goddamn yeah. busy. I, yeah. uh, and and uh, after festivals, someone will ask, well, well, how was it? What did you do? I, I can't remember shit. Yeah, it was I, just, it was I random. served beer. Yeah. That was. <laughs> yeah, I spoke to people, got in a lot of feedback. Yeah. Served a lot of beer. A lot of people told me how I, sh how I should be making beer. Yeah, what you're doing wrong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, how off. you screwed this off. <laughs> yeah. You know what you should do? You should really up the mash temperature on this a little bit. Yeah, and people will, like, say they tasted this, and they will come to me and go, I don't like coffee. Like, so how is that my problem? Yeah. Just, it's just, like, then why'd you drink a coffee beer, you dick? Yeah. <laughs> but, but Good on you, genius. Yeah. But speaking of coffee and this one, this one was made in 2017. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it still has all of the richness, all of the the full flavor and the sweetness. But a lot of the coffee has has like toned down been, a been bit, lot, yeah. it's really mm -hmm. toned down. Yeah, the coffee's kind of dropped off. Right? Yeah. yeah, I get a lot of sweetness, and um, yeah, it, it's well, a lot well, closer to the original extents now than what it was when it was new. But that's the nature of coffee and coffee yeah, beers. I mean, coffee is yeah. going to drop I off mean, in I time. I mean, you're not supposed to save them. This is me buying bottles of boxbeer.com yeah. and just hoarding them, yeah. hoping to be invited to podcasts <laughs> eventually. <laughs> look, look, look. Anytime you want to come on and share beers with us, we will not stop you. You just have to say, hey, guys, what are you doing this weekend? Nothing. You want to drink beer? Let's do a podcast. <laughs> it's that simple. Fair enough. Fair That's enough. that simple. No, you, you, you've opened up a whole new can of worms. Because yeah. now he's, no, he's going to invite himself to... No, we already have a guest. We have, like, the CEO of uh, of uh, Omnipolo. He's here. No, 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 I can come too. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the more the beer. I'm already, already outside. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've got my bag ready. It's uh, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> I've already opened the double IPA. <laughs> yeah. Can you hear my can opening skills? <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
Oh, so what do we think of the the Firewalker? We we jump past the Firewalker. The, yeah, you mean Firestone Walker. Yeah, yeah, I was, optimizing I was uh, I am. I'm just like you know what? Just Firewalker. Uh, Firewalker <laughs> Stone Man. Firestone Walker. <laughs> I gave this a uh, pie out of banana. The now that we're banana. working with uh, different rating systems. Yes, might as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I'm sorry. Uh, nine out of ten. Nine sorry. out of ten. Yeah, yeah, I really like it. And what's that on a uh, one to five scale? That'd be a 4.5. Uh, <laughs> Did you five? want me to do the math? <laughs> Did you just say 1 to 5? Yeah. Uh, so you're not even using five. the untapped version? I <laughs> meant 0 to 5. The, the 0 is not allowed. Yeah, you can do a 0. Oh, you can do 0. 0.25 to 5, to five, five. then. <laughs> we, you know, so we haven't given anything a 0. We did a couple of beers we just... Well, you haven't rated. You can't give a 0. Well, we can give a 0 on our own podcast. We control the rules. We'll this do whatever is, the fuck we want. For. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we haven't had a couple of beers. We just went. You know what? I think this beer is something's wrong with it. Yeah. So we just didn't review it or we didn't rate it. I should say uh, that's happened like twice. I think. Yeah, but it hasn't been that long. Yeah, I mean that many. But, but there hasn't been anything that few. we've given a zero to yet. Yeah. We've given some pretty. We've given a couple of point fives. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we've done a point two five yet. I don't think I don't you know can we have either. We could do point two five. We can. Yeah, yeah. You can. And I haven't untapped in like a year at this point. I stopped untapping in. August last year. Uh, how's Why? that feel? Why? I just didn't want to tell, do it anymore. Tell us about how did you how did you overcome? How did I how, endure? How, how did you feel at first? I know I had really bad untapped withdrawals for yeah. like three weeks. Yeah, yeah. You're shaking. So shaking. you were, yeah. you would go and you'd have a beer and you're just like I can't yeah. see if it's good before like, I drink. How do I know if this is like? Worth have you drinking? ever tried to get off meth? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. So, how will people know I drank the beer? <laughs> yeah. yeah. How will they know when I liked it? Like, how, how can I prove how? my worthiness to others? Exactly. <laughs> and you're such an influencer, too. I know. Oh, yeah. right? Influencer. You're a That's taste a maker, new man. thing to be. Tastemaker, influencer, ghost poop. I mean, mm-hmm. there's so many, so many nicknames. It's all there. There's so many words. Uh, maybe your listeners don't know about your nickname that you gained. Oh, the one that I gained at NBCC? Yeah. Ghost poop? Yep. Yeah. yeah you always knew that he was there, but when you looked... Poof! There's just an empty exactly. Matthias-shaped yeah. hole. Exactly. He what? might be holding your glass of beer, by the way. You might have lent his your glass yeah. of beer to him. Then you go look back to get your glass, and it's gone. And, and there was a weird smell left over yeah. too. So it, it was like it's like you felt you felt my presence, but suddenly I'm gone. And there's mm. no trace. But exactly. you did you did Ooh. one thing, and that I have to because this is so unacceptable that I have to uh, sort of. Oh, you know, call him of, out. Oh, yeah, I gotta call mm. you out. We already yelled at you a lot, and uh, but I can't let it go. I'm, I'm still not over it. Uh, you went to a friend who stood in a long queue for beer. Oh, oh and yeah. And then you sort of just acted like you belonged there. Yeah. And you got the rare beer before you would have if you had stood <laughs> at the end of the queue. And to be fair, he did have people standing in line waiting for him to show up. <laughs> oh, Further God. back in line. Hey, I'm gonna go with the uh, I drink a lot of alcohol defense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's solid. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it it works to, every single it time. It seems to work. Yeah. <laughs> and instead of after he gets his beer, coming by and saying hi, he just looks at you, walks by, and laughs, and just goes <laughs> off to talk to other people he would rather talk to. It's like <laughs> fuck you. You're such a dick. I know. Oh my God, are you so, 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 so uh, <laughs> Matthias, when you get to hell, will you be walking past Hitler in the queue? Yep. Just yep. like, exactly. oh, uh, I need yep. to get to Satan yep. before you. Oh, like, hey, Judas. Hey, Judas. Hey, Judas. <laughs> Long time no see. Oh, let me just stand here at the front of the queue. Oh, we're... Oh, fancy seeing you here. Well, you know what? I haven't hung out with you for a while. So. I, guess, I guess I will say, if you blend the uh, extends with a little bit of the um, anniversary the twenty-one, it's it's quite delicious. Are we oh, doing yeah. experiments now? Oh, I am. <laughs> so, which one do you blend a little bit of? Um, well, I just happen to have a little bit of both. So, <laughs> <laughs> there's a fifty-fifty blend. Yeah. that was really good. I know. It, yeah. If you if you add the the barrel aging to the extends, it gives it a nice. So, Round barrel aged flavor. It's maybe, quite nice. Fuck, bring out the we can we can mix beers together all, all night. right. Yeah. It's, it's turned <laughs> to a mixing session tonight. <laughs> Shit just got real. Oh yes. I think I have some lemonade or stuff in the fridge. So Matthias, we, yeah. we like you and it's all water under a bridge, but to all the listeners, please refrain from uh, cutting in line 
at beer festivals. Don't be that guy. E, nobody, nobody, nobody likes that guy. Eve, even if you see your friend at the front of the line, you just want to say hello. You're allowed to say hello. You're allowed to drink their beer that they brought to the queue, but then you should take one step back. Yeah, because we we notice and we hate you. Uh, I actually I did I did make a mistake because I gave a guy I knew while I had been in queue for like twenty minutes and I was finally approaching uh, the counter. Uh, this guy I knew went like, "Hey, Karin, are you here? That's so nice!" And I just I just gave him such a fucking bollocking. I was like, "No." You do not use me to cut the queue. And he, he sort of backed away all scared. And then he came, he came around to me uh, later in the day. And he was like, I'm so sorry. I was just trying to pass by. Oh, yeah. fuck. <laughs> so, Mikael Lindström, if you're listening, Karin's really sorry. I, I am so sorry. <clears throat> but yeah, I gotta agree. The Extends and the Firestone Walker combo is quite nice. It is. It's... It's quite delicious. It is. It's very, very delicious. <laughs> Make your own blend list. Yeah. All right. So the beer I brought today is one that my brother sent me. Um, we actually tried the Dos Vidonia at your parents' house. Yeah, we did. On a, Was it on the episode or we just drink it with your parents? I think we just had it. I think it with your parents. Yeah. And it was really, really good. Uh, and this is from Distill Brewery out of, I want to say, yeah, Bloomington, Illinois. I thought somewhere around the Chicago area. And this is the rye barrel version of Dos Vidonia. Oh, yeah. Um, so I'm really looking forward to this. 2017, so that was last year's release. Um, so I'm looking forward to this. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers guys. guys. Oh, it smells really chocolatey. And very and much whiskey Yeah. That has a, a definite whiskey edge to it. I get very much uh, barley wine to it. Yeah. Yeah, it's not very roasty, is it? No, but I like that. I remember it being... It's a little sweeter than I remember it being. <clears throat> that might be the, the bourbon barrel. The rye barrel. So, in a positive way, milk chocolate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Some people use milk chocolate as a derogatory term. But I like milk, milk chocolate. Right. Yeah, so right. milk stout. I think of uh, if it's kind of a milk chocolate yeah. kind of thing, I like, I like it quite a bit. I think it's also like a, a, a <clears throat> kind of a point where, like, I mean, the milk chocolate flavor can get a little bit overwhelming as well. Yeah. But in here, it's like a pleasant milk chocolate. And don't flavor. get me wrong, this is really good. Yeah. Yeah. It's really smooth. It's really I mean, there's like the what's the brewery called? The ones that make the, the Arctic Monkey or something like that. They make the. That's a band. Yeah, that's Arctic Monkeys is bad. Arctic Monkeys is bad. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But they have a um, flying the, the monkey. Canadian flying monkey. The Canadian, Canadian, Canadian yeah. yeah. The ones that, the big balls that come in like the yeah. cardboard package. Chocolate package. manifesto. Chocolate manifesto. Yeah. Hmm. That's a bad milk chocolate beer. I still have their um, that maple one that they do. That's also a bad. I, it's maple it's beer. so sweet. It's, it's too much like maple. Diabetes yeah. in a in a bottle. It's, yeah. It, I just you're gonna go. This really should be poured over. It should reduce it a little bit yeah. and then pour it over pancakes. It would yeah. be delicious, I'm sure. <laughs> it's so I mean so at that point it would probably be quite good. Yeah. Or if you could use it, like also reduce it down and use it for uh, like smoking a, a, a big ooh, big piece of like pork belly. That would be yeah. really good. Yeah. Like, use it as a cooking beer. Yeah. We actually did that. I know a home brewer who uh, on his uh, first attempt wasn't very good. Mm -hmm. uh, and made this horrible almost yeah, it was chunky. Out. So it came out, you know, you pour the bottle and it's plop. Yeah. And, uh, and the, it, it was actually disgusting. The, 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 um, the mouth feel was uh, terrible, terrible. But we figured out if you just uh, poured it over ice cream or mm -hmm. put, put some milk yeah. in it, and you kind of had a thing going. It was like a coffee <laughs> sort of drink. Uh, it's okay, you can say that it was my homebrew beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You called it the. Uh, what, the name? Yeah. Oh, um, I had three different variants of this beer. So, um, for all the home brewers, the original gravity was 1.250. Yeah. I, I looked, and no commercial home brewer has, uh, no commercial brewery has ever started on that original gravity because yeast doesn't thrive in that kind of syrupy environment. 
thrive. Mm. Uh, yeah, no, it doesn't. It does not. <laughs> yeah. it, it, it doesn't completely die. I mean, alcohol was produced. It probably went up to eight or nine percent, but it, it became like ketchup. It become became a non-Newtonian fluid where you had to hit the bottle for the chunks to go gloop out. It was absolutely disgusting mouth flavor, or mouth feel. I think um, you brought one of those out in the last polish here as well that I was part of at least. Yeah, yeah, that's when, but that's when yeah. we tried to mix it with milk and. Uh, Oh yeah, true. Yeah, and uh, that was kind of palatable. That was yeah. I'm sorry, am I pronouncing palatable, 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 palatable? palatable. Yeah, I knew what you meant. Oh, <laughs> thank you. But the, but the names were too crazy. They were like uh, one was called uh, "Fires of Gehenna," become a fiery blast and burn everything around. Uh, then it was "Sage of Hades," unleash total destruction, open the gates of hell. And uh, the last one I don't remember. It was. Uh, the, the, uh, so you have a real flair for the dramatics there with your, your beer naming. Yeah, yeah. And you had like the little monsters on the label. Yeah, but those were the stouts that weren't that were drinkable. So uh, the, the, the <laughs> and you like skimmed the top of it, or yeah. Yeah, the, the, yeah, you poured it, poured it through a uh, sieve the, the, so we could just <laughs> these all are, the chunks would gather at the top. <laughs> these are different times I've home brewed. I'm actually the worst home brewer in the world. So this the <laughs> chunky one that was one time, uh, the creature. Which is what you're referring to. The Creature series is the one that I tried. Yeah. yeah. Uh, th so the Creature uh, is, uh, is when I tried to make an Imperial Stout and I misread my own home brewing recipe. So I tripled the amount of water and I, instead of a 12% beer, I made a 3 or 4% beer. So I had to pour bourbon directly into the fermentation oh, uh, jug. I, I measured it in deciliters. So like one, two, three, four, five, six, you, you know, ah, just the whole bottle. That one became drinkable. And I have no bourbon anymore. No, that's true. Uh, so that one went from 4% to 7.5 yeah. from the bourbon. Because it's all bourbon edition. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like bourbon with some beer. Exactly. So, it, so it's not bourbon barrel, it's not bourbon oak, it's bourbon stout. It's the bourbon edition. Well, yeah. it's like folk bourbon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Basically what it is, right? Oh god, yes. But but then I I, I split that into several fermentation uh, jugs. What do you call them? The, yeah. uh, uh, demijohns. No, but they were plastic. Oh, plastic, plastic buckets. Bad buckets, <laughs> fermentation buckets. So two different ones. One with a lot of uh, like uh, vanilla um, beans and one with a lot of raspberries. So then when I when I put them on a bottle, I could pour half of one and half of the other yeah. into a bottle and make a completely new uh. variant. The, the vanilla raspberry. Uh, it's very smart. <laughs> and then also uh, you can put these small oak cubes. As long as yeah. you put them through the oven... Well, you know, you, you, you already had so much bourbon. Do you really need to add oak cubes to it? Yes, the <laughs> absolutely. Into the bottles. Oh, okay. So you, you, I, plopped, oh. I, plopped, I plopped the oak cubes into the bottles like three oak cubes per bottle or something. And then, oh, there, those are new variants. So one, one batch of beer became like seven or eight different I yeah. think variants. I think we've been doing marketing all wrong. It sounds like yep. uh, uh, we need to rethink the way we're uh, playing this game. Yes, yeah. you're uh, you're killing it, man. <laughs> yeah, so so I brewed so beer. You took, you took one shitty beer and you made eight versions of it. <laughs> yes. That's amazing. <laughs> But the, the vanilla bourbon non-oak variant was actually better than expected. Okay. Nice. Look, uh, can I just give a little anecdote to give you a feeling for who Martin is? He's not a very practical man. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, he grew up in the city. I grew up on a farm. And uh, whenever there, we're at home with my, uh, at the farm, and something needs to be done, something needs to be fixed or repaired or, or worked on. We always give him like a spanner that doesn't fit anywhere and we tell him to <laughs> hold this. Please just, you're, you're helping so much if you just hold this. Uh, and uh, he just stands in a corner going, I'm... I'm helping. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that's inclusive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, oh yeah. 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 And uh, they actually taught me to drive a tractor. Wow. Up in Småland. 
Was it a real tractor? Or one of those like you kick your legs? No, it, it, <laughs> this one was a, a, an actual real tractor. It was a lawnmower. Uh, no, <laughs> no it, it was not. This was a real tractor. I'm coming to the punchline because all of a sudden I have to brake, I guess, and they're screaming, use the right pedal. The problem is on the, on the right side, there are three different pedals. I'm no, not even kidding. No, there isn't. Fair enough. There are absolutely three pedals. Fair enough. One is for your heel. That one is not the brake. <laughs> Everyone should know that the heel pedal is some kind of weird fuel injector pedal that you're not supposed to ever push. The, no. What did you think I pushed? I just pushed the ran heel pedal. random right pedals. Yeah, the crane fell off. And no, uh... it did not. <laughs> Some people died, but yeah, they had it coming anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, don't, don't, don't be anywhere near him when he drives the tractor. I mean, yeah, that's, so, what, yeah. that's what I'm hearing. Or has any power tools? This is this is just Darwin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> collateral damage. But but you are. He's uh, like collateral Darwin. Then it's like it's not him that gets killed. It's the people around him. <laughs> <laughs> But but to be fair, you are a lovely person. I love you very much, and you know stuff that I don't about. Things, I suppose. Uh, some things, I guess. It's not beer. No, no apparently not. Because I won. <laughs> Power tools or tractors. Uh, yeah, yeah, you won in a different episode of the podcast. You didn't win in this episode of the podcast. Well, there's no, there's no game. <laughs> <laughs> is, is there, can you win this podcast? Can, can you win a bottle share? I mean, um, I, I brought a rare double IP. But I brought your the own best brewery in Sweden. Yeah, it's true. That's true. And, yeah. and just hang around. There might be a unicorn. So okay. yeah, I so think yeah, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, that's true. It's pretty good. I don't have anything to compete with that. <laughs> all of you oh, are you competing? No, apparently not. No. <laughs> all of you podcast, all of you podcast listeners should uh, check out the untapped uh, top list for Sweden. Yeah. So nerd brewing is at the top. Uh, then Psychopipes, another uh, Malmo uh, brewery, has risen to the second place. Not as attractive, but you know he's kind of yeah. good looking. Not toast is super attractive. I want to have his man babies. Wow! <laughs> All right, keep it in your pants. Does he does he listen to this podcast? I have no idea. I have no idea, but yeah, we can uh, probably make him do yeah. that. Mikael, uh, not toast. If you're listening, yeah, you're you're kind of hot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then third place is on the bottle. Obviously. Yeah. Fourth place is a brewery I want to mention. It's Maria Toyet's Mikrobrüggeri. Well, where... Oh, okay. Mikrobrüggeri. All right. Uh, I tried the... Um, what's the one they just had in Systembolaget? Did they have one at Systembolaget? In that case, I missed no, it. No, they didn't have one. No. They, they, Who am I thinking of then? I have no idea what you're thinking of. How so, the hell would I know? So, Single um, singer syndrome or something like that? Or... Oh, no, you mean microphone brewery? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Microphone. Yeah, they're, the they're, dude from uh, Millicon. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I'm thinking about. Who, they're, who they're are you talking about? Maria Toyet. It's okay. some kind of square. Stockholm. Yes, yeah, Stockholm Square. Yeah. Oh, okay. So what, what they do is they make these 25 centiliter bottles. Mm -hmm. the, the labels are these like typewriter style labels that just says... Exactly. Imperial Stout. And just says uh, Cherry Creek. Yeah. Uh, Creek Goose or something. Mm -hmm. And I tried two of their beers, and they were both five out of five. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people like their uh, their beers a lot. So how do you how do you find them? I have no idea. I, I got to try them in the in a queue for beer. Yeah. Ah, so okay. I got, just got lucky. But I, I think they're. Uh, uh, I think they were available at uh, Glossbanken actually oh, for a short period wow. of time. Uh, but I have no idea what their production oh, is like. Uh, let's make a plug. Uh, Nerd Brewing is currently available at Glossbanken.com. Is it yes. com? Only yes. Or SE. SE, yeah. Then Glass Bunken, Google it. Glass yeah. Bunken, yeah. Figure it out. And they're and they uh, only 99 crowns a bottle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, that's cheap. Yeah, so it's, so I was surprised, actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it extends maybe the regular version. Yeah. And it's it extends and, Mole, yeah. which yeah. you should absolutely get because the last batch of ex uh, extends Mole was only made in 28 bottles. Jesus. Total wow. available at festivals. And now it's been remade so that you can buy it at Glass Bunken. End of plug. Any of the mole beers. I love you're, you're, mole beers. You're well noted as your love of yeah. mole beers. He hates them. <laughs> if a, if a listener him. doesn't know what mole is, it's a Mexican mm, spice mix with uh, cocoa, cinnamon, yeah. chili, everything tasty. Yeah. You all need to pull yourself together because he's hosting now. Martin is hosting. 
Well, you know, he's basically okay. like, he's, yeah, he's he's he's, he's like, kind of, you know, we just let him run the show. That's yeah. kind of the guest thing about about having guests. Like, I can in. kick out. You I can kick just back. let them run the show. Yeah. Or he's kind of like, yeah, I don't have to do much. So. <laughs> they've been really waiting. They've been waiting for this moment. Exactly. They've been they've been struggling, just pulling this show across the finish line. Yeah, for the past year. Just yeah, finally, like, finally we can sit uh, back and just drink. I know. <laughs> like we have Martin out again, so to do anything. <laughs> I can't just wait for the next time he calls with like tons of double IPAs down my door. <laughs> <laughs> I just love love the sound of my own voice in my head. Not outside. No, the the podcasts are unlistenable when I'm a part of them. I actually did shitty radio once uh, for uh, Radio AF, uh, the the student radio in uh, Sweden, uh, in Lund. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you kind of got over that whole hearing your own voice on tape thing. Yeah. Pretty fucking fast. Yeah. Wow. God. <laughs> so so uh, now I'm hosting. What has just happened <laughs> is uh, somebody opened a new beer. Uh, it's beautiful. It's the, the label is sort of a dude who's also a bee. Oh, it's uh, Yeppe from Evil Twin. Oh. Yeah. So it's from Evil Twin. Yeah, please please talk more about it while I It's pour. called. Well, uh, you're hosting now, so. Yeah. No, it's. So the, describe the label. Oh, the label is uh, it's a gradient from from sort of a honey yellow to a dark uh, darker brown, and uh, and uh, the bee, bee dude uh, who is apparently yep, it looks like like a Charlie Brown caricature of himself, mm-hmm. holding one of these uh, American honey sticks. Right. Uh, yeah. So basically, this is based off of the Honey Nut Cheerios yes. um, cereal box. And it's called Honey Nut Yepios. Oh, I get it now. Yeah. yeah. It's, and, and it's, it's a word joke. Absolutely no chicken added. Absolutely added. no chicken added, yeah. yeah. I think that's, that's, it's, that's it's, the funniest part. It's though. lucky that they added, because a lot of brewers apparently add a lot of chicken. Well, there beer. was a... Well, I mean, even when you had the fried, fried chicken chicken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, this came out around the same time as the fried chicken chicken did. This is the veil too, isn't it? Oh, it might be, yeah. Could be. Nope. Uh, oh, hold on. Yep, yeah, it is. It's totally the veil. Nice. I'm going to self five myself. Well, there you go. You can have one more. Oh, thank you. Evil twin and the veil. Nothing's one. All right, you get twenty points. And this is. So I'm at twenty-one points. <laughs> yeah. You, you're you're still combining two different podcasts. Yeah, I get to do that. I'm yeah. still I'm still at zero, by the way. Holy crap! You can get a bit of uh, like honeycomb on this. It's so sweet. Oh. <laughs> That might be the sweetest thing I've ever tried in my entire life. <laughs> yeah, that is like there's a word cloyingly mm-hmm. sweet. It's yeah. just like it's like it's not sugary. It's just aggressively sweet. Like when when uh, when you brew and you have uh, sort of beaten all the sugar you can out of the. I'm sorry. What's the English word? Uh, the word. Um, Words. 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 Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you know, you want to get as much sugar as you can out of that. And this tastes like that. This this tastes like it hasn't been fermented yet. Yeah. 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 Rest yeah. sweetness. Rest sotma. Yeah. So. Uh, what the Residual fuck? sweetness. Residual yeah. sweetness. Nice. Yeah. This just. That's why you're like the real host, and I'm just a. Uh, like just pure sugar impossible. water. And like you almost, you almost it's like, like you can chew it. Big when you pour it out. Like you're gonna see these little bits of sugar grains come out of the very bottom. Well, I mean, so you can see in the, the sugar crystals in 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 the in the lacing on the So glass. in the south, they make um, sweet tea, sweet tie, sweet tie. In the sweet tie, you put a lot of sugar in it, and <laughs> you, you, you can stir you it up. Do a little you bit stir more it up real action. good, and as you stir it, the sugar it uh, it mixes in with the tie, but it doesn't all dissolve because you don't stir it enough, and then just kind of kind of sits down on the bottom of the glass or the bottom of the jug and then when you pour it all that sugar just kind of kind of pours along with it so as you get into the very bottom of the jug you get all that sugar with it you know what i'm saying is it is it just me or could you see him on true blood <laughs> yeah yeah definitely. yeah oh yeah so oh, yeah. right so that's um 60 vampire yeah yeah, yeah. so that's the uh, that's what this tastes like this tastes like like sweet Shitty. tea that hasn't been stirred very well and all that sugar is just sitting at the bottom of the of the glass <laughs> can you, can you, can you, Sugar. Shook his mind. <laughs> oh yes. If, if you were, I don't know if you saw, like all, all through the, all through True Blood, and like it was like the last season when, when was it Bill and Suki were finally depart. It was like Suki, it's no longer mine. And I just about 
die because the, like, the entire season was like Sook is mine and this, that was the best <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think of that oh god <laughs> Nah, but I love your southern hospitality, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Christ, that is harsh. Okay. It's a little, a little bit too much, yeah. I have diabetes. Yes. <laughs> Please help. My tongue is stuck to the roof of my mouth. <laughs> to, the, uh, to the roof of my mouth. <laughs> that was horrible. So this is probably becoming the worst podcast you've ever made, right? Uh, I don't know. Oh, we have talk. true blood references and everything. This, is, this is amazing. So this got is, a, this is an accents going on. Yeah, this is an imperial stout with honey and almonds. Comes in at 12% alcohol. <coughs> where, where is that alcohol? And what? This is lazy yeast. I mean, this is just... But, but this is false advertisement. Almonds are not nuts. It's true. It's true. Neither are peanuts. Nope. There's is, legumes. That's right. Legumes. Mm. Legumes. So let's sue them. <laughs> We're not in America. Almond is a pit. Yeah. Now I'll really? tell you right here that this will not hold. Now right here, right here, I do declare this will not stand, I swear. <laughs> you must look at this and say, there is no almonds in this. I did not put We're almonds no in that beer. <laughs> there is, there may be nuts, there is no nuts because an almond is not a nut. A peanut is not a nut. Fair if he gets hit by a bus tomorrow, are you like single? Do I? <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> I got this uh, true blood pen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Like, <laughs> damn. <laughs> yeah, we, we've all been kinky to the game together. <laughs> I mean, We're going to get the real blindfolds out. Yeah. <laughs> Scars will do. They're good for a lot of things. They, I'm not they, picky. They, nah. they work for blindfolding and tying up. <laughs> 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 All right, guys. Well, I think we've uh, we have successfully run this horse into the ground at this point. <laughs> um, oh, 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 we're beating the horse. We yeah. are. We are flogging it senselessly, yeah. and uh, it is begging for mercy. Um, so. Drink up, you dum dums. <laughs> We're not there yet. Oh God damn it! You fail. Yeah, yeah, find us online at what's on tapodcast.com. Drink up, you dum dums. Nope. Fuck. Nope. nope. Run. You, you can find us at <laughs> iTunes, Spotify, Instagram, Instagram, Facebook. There you go. On the website. On the website. Yeah. And so until next time. Well, you can do it now. Drink it's up, really- you dum dums. <laughs> there you go.